in the end, oh God. We thank you, 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 oh God. As we reflect on the past couple years, oh God, we know that there have been a lot of things going on, oh God, but we declare that you are still good, oh God, and your mercy still endures forever, oh God. We thank you for the opportunity to see the goodness of you, oh God, while we're here in the land of the living, oh God. We thank you for the breath in our lungs, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that we can breathe again and lift up our voices to give you praise, oh God. We thank you that in the presence of the Lord there is liberty, oh God. We thank you for the freedom to worship you, oh God. We know, oh God, that when your presence is here, not only is there liberty, oh God, but it breaks some shackles and some chains, oh God. So we thank you for the things that we've, you've broken, oh God, just because we've entered into your presence, oh God. We thank you that the prayers of the righteous have great impact, oh God. We thank you that you are a God, that you are a God who answers prayers, oh God. We thank you for every prayer that you've answered, oh God. We give you glory, oh God, and we magnify you, oh God. We declare that you are good. Thank you for keeping our homes, oh God. Thank you for keeping our minds, oh God. The fact that we are here, oh God, whether we are here in the sanctuary or our home watching, oh God, we, we have the ability to watch and to glorify you, oh God, with those that have also know you, oh God. And for that, we give you praise, oh God. We thank you for technology and we thank you for the ways you've moved through it, oh God. But we thank you that you are greater than any technology, oh God. We thank you that your airway are never shut, oh God, but you hear every each and every one of our prayers, oh God. We thank you because you don't move, oh God. You don't abandon us or forsake us, oh God. The same God that split the Red Sea is the one that has kept our minds, oh God. And for that we give you praise, oh God. The same God that raised Christ from the dead has healed our bodies. And for that we give you praise, oh God. We lift you up, oh God. Thank you for keeping our minds, oh God, and comforting us, oh Oh God, though some of us have lost loved ones, oh God, we thank you, oh God, that you are near those that are brokenhearted, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for being the God who restores. I come against and I bind anything that would try to uh, take away your restoration, oh God. We thank you for restoring the things that the canker worm has tried to steal, oh God. We bind it now by the power and authority of Jesus Christ. God, we declare that we will give you praise, oh God. God. We declare that we will lift you up, oh God, because you are worthy, oh God. Not only do we acknowledge that you inhabit the praises of your people, oh God, but we acknowledge that there is power in prayer, oh God. We acknowledge that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you and you alone are God. Lord, in the midst of all, you are good, oh God. And for that, we give you praise, oh God. Lord, we lift you up, oh God. We thank you for moving in this service, oh God. We pray that you would bless praise and worship, oh God. You would bless the word that is coming forth, oh God, and that you would continue to move, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
healing from some stuff that happened in your family. If you need healing today, God is here to heal you. You don't have to be in the building. Just receive the healing today. Just say, God, I am healed. Say, I am healed.
worship the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. I'm feeling that dance in his presence. Hallelujah. And you know, some of us got a churchy dance and some of us, we ain't accustomed to dancing like that. You know, you understand what I'm saying? But what makes it a holy dance is where you dance it. Y'all, 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 y'all. You, you want to, because I see some of y'all, y'all want, you know, you want to break into something else, but you don't really know, like, I can't do it, Pastor Didi do it. It's okay. That's her holy dance. Hallelujah. As long as you are presenting your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Hallelujah. Whatever dance you got is a holy dance in his presence. So I'm going to give somebody, because maybe you got something that she ain't do. Come on. today is coming from Psalm 54. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Psalm 54. Father, we bless you, Lord. I have been feeling this, sensing this shifting of seasons. And, and it's not just in the natural not just because it is almost pumpkin spice season, hallelujah. I know y'all say it's here, but I, I gotta finish burning my summer candle first and then I'll, then I'll fully enter in, but, but I've been sensing this shifting of seasons and, and, and I heard the Lord say to me, concerning a season that I was over. <laughs> you know, I wasn't out of it yet, but I was over it. He said, you're on the other side of it. Mm. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And then he's be been speaking other things to me over the last couple of weeks about 
the shifting of seasons. And one of the things that he spoke to me gave me such perspective. That's the thing. Sometimes it's not until the season shifts that you understand what the season was about. Am I talking to anybody? And so I really believe that the, the word of the Lord today has to do with shifting seasons. That perhaps some of us are on the other side of it and are now being given new perspective on it. Perhaps some of us are getting ready to shift and need to know how to handle it. And you might know what I'm talking about. Shift in season. Psalm, Psalm 54 says, come with great power, O God, and rescue me. Defend me with your might. Listen to my prayer, O God. Pay attention to my plea. For strangers are attacking me. Violent people are trying to kill me. They care nothing for God. But God is my helper. The Lord keeps me alive. May the evil plans of my enemies be turned against them. Do as you promised and put an end to them. I will sacrifice a voluntary offering to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. Listen to this last part right here. Because everything else up until now has been in the present and in the future tense. But the last part changes tense. He says, for you have rescued me. You have rescued me already. You have rescued me from my troubles and helped me to triumph over my enemies. I want to talk to you this morning from the topic, I'm leaving singing. I'm leaving singing. If you're in the comments, if you're in online, and some of y'all are online, I, I see what you're doing. You be online because you're running late and then you show up in the sanctuary. I see it. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. If you're in the sanctuary, would you just say it? Look at somebody and catch their eyes and say, I'm leaving. Hey, I'm leaving singing. I'm leaving. I'm leaving singing. I'm leaving singing. I might have been sitting and crying, but I'm leaving singing. I might have been mourning but I'm leaving. This may have been a, a season of grieving, Lord God, but I am leaving. Yeah. I'm leaving singing. I need you to say it because somebody don't feel it yet, but that's, that's what the prophetic word is for. It, it's to say it until the rest of you catches up with it. Come on. I'm leaving singing. I, I'm leaving singing. Don't, don't be fooled by these tear-stained eyes. I'm leaving singing. And I know my face look puffy because I've been crying a lot, but I'm, I'm leaving. I don't hear y'all in here. I'm leaving. I'm leaving singing. Father, speak now, for your word is enough in Jesus' name. Amen. You can have your seat. I'm starting to wonder if one of the reasons why the Bible instructs us that if I have conflict or offense with a person, I should go to that person. Not to their mama their cousin, their uncle and them, their friend from high school, the other person in the friend group. But it tells us that I should go to that person. And I'm starting to wonder if that is because when we give another party access to our conflict, 
we run the risk that they will see that conflict as an opportunity for themselves. And it works. How many marriages could have been restored but ended up in divorce because somebody took the conflict in the marriage to work? I'm saying something right here. And somebody at work who heard the conflict saw it as an opportunity for themselves. Lord have mercy. Where is this coming from? Ziff in the Bible is not an important town. It's only mentioned a handful of times. In fact, there are two towns in Judah by the same name. And among the two towns, they're only mentioned a handful of times. Yet Ziph is the background of what is happening here in Psalm 54. The background passage is in 1 Samuel 26. And the background passage is the account of two men from Ziph who come to Saul to tell them, tell him about David. Here is the thing, Ziph has nothing to do with the conflict that is going on between David and Saul. Ziph is not in it, Ziph's name wasn't mentioned, Ziph has no dog in the fight as the saying goes, but the scripture says that some people from Ziph hear about the conflict and when they hear about the conflict, rather than pray, rather than mind their business, rather encourage people to do what is right, the people in Ziph who hear about the conflict find in it an opportunity for themselves these people seize the moment to make themselves relevant and it works because had they not seized the moment they wouldn't have even made it into the sacred text these men should have been minding the business that pays them. Come to Saul and say to Saul, I heard you got a problem with David. Well, we know where he is. <laughs> Men that would have not even been on Saul's radar using a moment of conflict that don't have anything else to do with them to make themselves relevant. Lord have mercy. I, I, wanna, I wanna tell you as we're making this journey, be careful who you invite into your conflict. Be, be very careful, be very careful. You might be genuinely seeking resolution, but they might be seeking relevance. Be careful, be. Saul has been hunting David motivated by his own jealousy and his own insecurity. And because David has good sense, David is running. Can I just give you this deep revelation? It makes good sense to avoid people who are trying to bring you harm. That's deep, ain't it? That's from the third heaven right there. It makes good sense. It, it makes good sense. So David is now running for his life. And initially when David takes off because he decides finally to get away from Saul, initially he's basically by himself. And while he's running by himself, he cries out to God and, and he asks God to send him help. But, and God sends him help, but it's not the kind of help that anybody would actually want. For the, the scripture says that, that, that 400 men gather to David and those men are in distress and in debt and discontented. In other words, they are people who came to David because they didn't have anything else going on in their lives. They are people who wanted to escape the life that they have and David became a good excuse to get out of town. Half of the people that came to David would have been on their way to jail had they not met with David in a doulam. But God took 
took this group of distressed, in debt, and discontented men, men who had mismanaged their lives, mismanaged their opportunities, mismanaged their resources, mismanaged their relationships. God sent those people who had a history of mismanagement to Adullam to meet with David, and God and David turned them into the baddest army in Israel. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I don't know what you may have mismanaged, but I want you to understand that mismanagement does not mean it's over. Sometimes the mismanagement is just the beginning of God's redemptive process. So God sends David this motley crew of 400 men. And you know how it is. The, bro the brave ones go first, and there's some that are standing in the back looking like, oh, they doing all right. And so later, 200 more join this motley crew that God and David use to raise up a mighty army. So now David is running from Saul, and he has a crew of people with him. It's nothing like having people fight for you that have nothing to lose. Listen, when people don't have nothing to lose, they fight on a whole nother level. It's, it's a whole something else when they ain't got nothing to lose. He got 600 people that have nothing to lose. And the scripture says that Saul sets out hunting David and his men with 3,000 of his most elite soldiers. We, we got 600 distressed, discontented, and indebted men. And we got 3,000 professionally trained elite soldiers. We got no resources, and we got all of the resources of the kingdom. We got a little shepherd boy who got a promotion and got a little bit of rank, but then had to escape it versus a king. And this is how the backdrop of Psalm 54 is set up. And the scripture says that, that as Saul was hunting David, God didn't let Saul find him. How you got 3,000 elite soldiers, people who have been trained their whole lives, even if not their whole adulthood, to be soldiers, and you can't find 600 men that can't even manage themselves? That's the answer right here. It says, God saw hunted David day and night, but God did not let Saul find him. Some of us missed that revelation. We, we were mad because David it was hunted, but we missed the fact that God did not let Saul find him. We, we were mad because all David had to work with was a motley crew, but we missed the fact that God did not let Saul find him. We were mad because he, David had served Saul so faithfully and brought great victory to Israel through David's hand, but we missed the fact that God did not let... I need somebody in here to give God a praise for what should have found you, but God did not let Saul find him. And so one night during the hunt, David and his men had decided to hide out in Ziph. And it is when they get to Ziph that the men of Ziph try to make themselves relevant and inform on David to Saul. And while they are trying to make a name for themselves, God is about what God is always about, making a name for himself. Ooh, God, if you want to use me to make a name for yourself, I don't even mind. I, I ain't even mad. I, I ain't even mad. I ain't mad. So, so the scripture says in 1 Samuel 26, that Saul lays down to rest, and, and his, his soldiers strategically position themselves around him, and that they make a circle, and they lay down with Saul in the middle. In other words, anything that comes to Saul will have to go through all of his elite soldiers. And, and David and, and, and his men discover where Saul and his men are. And the Bible says that as Saul is laying down in the middle 
of the, the circle, and the soldiers are, are, are surrounding uh, Saul, the, the same God that did not allow uh, uh, Saul to find David, also put the elite soldiers to sleep. Lord have mercy. You have to understand the power of this because all of the soldiers don't ever sleep at the same time. Am I telling the truth, mama? Y'all know mama's a veteran. If you want to know how to fight, ask her. All of the soldiers are not allowed to f sleep at the same time. Typically, some sleep while others watch. Typically, it is the case that no matter what time of day or night and no matter what the location is, somebody has to be on guard against the potential attack of the enemies. But the same God that did not allow David, that did not allow Saul to find David, the same God is also apparently better than melatonin. The same God put all of Saul's army to sleep. And so David and his right-hand man, Abishai, come upon them and notice that they are all completely knocked out. And they walk right through the circle up on to Saul. And Abishai is that dude. He is. Abishai is like, yo, son with one pop. I ain't even got to pop him twice. If this is about to be a whole rack, we can do this. Just give me the word, David. Give me the word. <laughs> David said, don't touch him. Abishai, like, hold on, 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 hold on. This is like that Saul, right? Like this Saul Saul, the, the one that had been trying to kill us, the one that had been trying to hunt us. This, this him, right? This him. I mean, maybe he got a cousin that looked like him, but I'm pretty sure this is him. David said, don't touch him. He said, don't kill him. For who can remain innocent after attacking the Lord's anointed one? Jesus, anybody other than me not show you that saved yet? Woo, Jesus. Do you see that? David has been given the choice. Avenge your adversary or honor your God. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. And with all power to avenge his adversary. The reality is he could have done it and snuck off into the woods and nobody even knew that it was him who took off Saul's head. With all power to avenge his adversary, David chose rather to honor his God. I, I, I need to help somebody right here. You, you see, Saul was a treacherous monster towards David, but David realizes that as treacherous as you have been to me, as trifling as you have been to me, as messy as you have been to me, as much as my name has been in your mouth, and you have actively worked to dismantle my reputation and even take my life, it is possible that the hand of God might still be on you. It is possible that God might still have purpose for your life. As bad as he did me, Abishai, I'm not going to mess around and come against someone that God might be for. Woo! We could talk about that for six months because isn't it the case that we assume that if they hurt us that God is no longer on their side, that God's hand is no longer on them? We assume that because we are against them, God is against them too. Oh, Lord, y'all got quiet. Y'all got quiet. David said, just in case there's a little bit of oil still on his life, just in case God might be considering using him again, just in case he still prays and God still answers, just in case I'm going to choose rather 
to honor God. So David and Abishai took Saul's spear and his water bottle. And they went back up into the mountains. And once they were at a safe distance, David called out to Abner, the general of Saul's army. And once they were at a safe distance, Abner, Abner, what are you even doing, man? It's the sleeping while on duty for me. Brandishing the sword. Ab, ab, yo, ab, this is 101. This is 101. The scripture says that David, from the safe distance of the mountains, listen, he wise, he reckless, but he ain't foolish, begins to taunt Abner because he was literally asleep on the job. Saul overhears it, and, and, and Saul, you know, he gets all sentimental. Oh, David, my son. The son you was just trying to kill. My son, you have honored me. You have done what is right. You have shown, you know, all this kind of sentimental drivel, you know, when people caught doing what's wrong, and they don't have no intention to change, so they try to manipulate you with their emotions. Like that. Saul because of the mercy of David, turns and goes home. And David writes a song. The song that David writes is really a swan song. You, you know what a swan song is? A swan song is the final performance of an actor, a singer, a composer, etc. And according to the folklore, whether the name swan song comes from, swans sing their most beautiful song right before they die. And so the term swan song has come to describe someone who is leaving in style. It is a final appearance, a, a final pronouncement, a final announcement, if you will, but it is someone who is leaving in style. Now, to be clear, David is not about to die, but his season is. David is closing this season of his life because up until Ziph, David is the hunted. But something happens at Ziph that makes David decide that I'm not going to spend the rest of my life on defense. I need to develop another strategy. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life trying to convince fools that I'm worth, I'm worth something. I need to develop another strategy. Something happens at Ziph that David says, I can't cannot spend the rest of my life running from Saul. I cannot spend the rest of my life escaping toxicity. I've got to enter something that is more productive. And so now David says to his men, this running from Saul is whack. We're going to go and develop an alliance with the Philistines. And when we develop this alliance with the Philistines, Saul will leave us alone. And when you read the scripture, Ziph is actually the last time that Saul came and tried to hunt David. I, I need you to hear this. I, I need you to hear this. In other words, David decided that I am not going to wait for the season to close on me. I'm going to close the season. 
Woo, Lord Jesus. I wish you understood that you had the power to close seasons, that, that you don't have to be the hunted for the rest of your life, that you don't have to be the dragged for the rest of your life, that you don't have to be the insecure because somebody told you you had buck teeth in the second grade for the rest of your life. Honey, go get you some braces in the name of the Lord Jesus. Go get you some therapy. Go get you some good self-talk. Go get you what you need in order to close. Look at somebody and say, close the season, close the season, close, put it in a, in a comment, put it in a chat, close the season, close the season, close the season. I don't, I don't want you to get used to season closing you. I want you to get used to closing seasons. I, I want you to get used to closing the book and say it's finished and it's done. I, I want you to get used to walking out of places and not looking back. I, I want you to get used to sending the last text message and blocking because you can't, uh, you can't entertain the gaslighting narcissism. I want you, come on here. I want you to become accustomed to closing a season that doesn't seem like it wants to let you go. David decides that he's going to close the season. And he decides to close the season not only in his strategy, but also in his song. Lord have mercy. Here's a question for you. If you had to write a song about the last season of your life, what would that song be? Mm, Lord, uh -huh, I felt that. Mm, Lord Jesus, how much time you got? How, how many words can we use in the sanctuary, Pastor? Can we, can, can we, can we use all the language that we have access to or just, just language that's appropriate for this place? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, what, what would that song be? If you were in the conditions that David was in, you, you might write about a lot of things. You, you might write the song about fear or, or about anger. You might write about betrayal. You might write about abandonment or being used or weariness or even courage. And, and I would really understand if David took this opportunity to write a song about the people of Ziv because they were really messy and opportunistic. And, and I believe that they would be something therapeutic about writing a song about Ziff. I, I believe that, 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 that uh, uh, Deacon Illy and, and, and Dr. Walker would, would appreciate the fact that, that I don't want to disenfranchise your grief by telling you not to write a song about grief. Go ahead on and give Ziff some verses. Ziff might deserve a verse or a, a song or two, but Ziff makes for a horrible swan song because remember the point of the swan song is to leave and stop. I'm not leaving dragging and I'm not leaving raggedy and I'm not leaving beaten up. I'm leaving in style. I, I don't want to disenfranchise your grief. So by all means, please sing about Ziff. And, and I don't want to trigger your trauma. So by all means, please sing about Saul and sing about Abner. But don't let Ziff and don't let Saul and don't let Abner and don't let being hunted be your swan song. David said, Ziff may have given me something to sing about, and surely David gave me something to sing about, but this season is not leaving me. I'm leaving it, and I am leaving this season in style. Psalm 54 is the swan song, Lord have mercy, Jesus, of David. He doesn't focus all of his energy on Ziff, nor does he focus all of his energy on Saul. On Saul. He says in his swan song, I'm leaving singing. I'm singing about how the Lord came through with great power and rescued me. I'm singing about how when I had no one else to defend me, it was the Lord himself who held me up. I'm leaving singing. I'm singing about he, how even when I was in a cave, he heard my cry and pitied my every groan. I'm leaving singing about how strangers attack me and violent people try to kill me and people try to make themselves relevant at my expense but God was my helper I'm leaving singing that despite the best attempts of the enemy it is the Lord who keeps me alive I'm leaving singing 
about how what was plotted against me actually worked for my good. I'm leaving singing that it is the Lord who has rescued me from every trouble and helped me to ruin my enemies. I'm leaving singing that he has delivered me from dangerous scene and dangerous unseen. I'm leaving singing that after all I've been through, my worship is still intact. My praise is still intact. I'm leaving singing that my God is a promise keeper and neither height nor death nor angels nor principalities. Things present or things to come. Nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. Oh, I'm not dragging out of this season and I'm not being dragged out of this season look at somebody and tell them I'm leaving singing I'm leaving I'm leaving I'm leaving I'm leaving singing come on I'm leaving sing What we 
Hallelujah. Anybody leaving singing? Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we bless you. Hallelujah. We want to thank you all so much for your faithfulness and giving. Man, if you would like to sow a seed, if you've been blessed by the word, blessed by the worship, blessed by the ministry, amen. Uh, you are the seed that we sow is not a tip for what we receive, amen, but it is a reflection of our desire to be obedient to the word of the Lord, amen. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness of the world and they that dwell therein. And all he asks of us is that we tithe, which is a tenth of our increase, and we bring our offering. Amen. Amen. And so if you'd like to give today, you can do so by texting 7977. You can do so by cash. Hashtag is NLWM. You can also do so via our app if you're in and you have cash, you can deposit it on the way out the door. There's a, a basket in, in the back. We're trying to minimize walking and touching and all that. Amen. We want to make our increased confession. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to confess? Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings. And we thank you that as we give our tithes and our offerings, we do so in faith believe in you for wisdom to make the right choices, for revelational knowledge to know. We give believe in you for spiritual eyes to see the hurt in others, for to embrace those who come against us. Ooh, Jesus. We give believe in you for spiritual sight to understand the word of truth, health so that every body part performs the perfections for which it was created. We give believe in you for the peace of 
remain settled in the midst of the battle. The mind of Christ to administrate your authority properly. We give Father believing you for jobs and better jobs and better businesses, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales commissions. We give believing you for clients, referrals and contracts, favor settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns. We give believing you for discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, gifts and support, scholarships, tuitions paid, bills decrease and bills paid including and especially student loans and credit card debt. We give believing you for an increase. We give believing you that we are leaving singing in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for meeting our financial needs as you meet every other need of us, that we may have more than enough to give unto the kingdom of God and to permit the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord God lift his countenance upon you, cause you to leave singing and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. The blessing of the rest upon you. Let's leave singing. Hallelujah.